say, oh, oh, I didn't know anybody had passed no licks. I had seen none of, I, I saw none of this happening. Hey y'all, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Cecily, also known as Bad Fat Black Girl. I'm a writer, I'm a trap feminist, I'm an entertainment journalist, and I'm here to tell y'all there is no right time to get arrested. <laughs> no! I don't wanna go to jail! Um, yeah, I gotta put some lotion on my hands. I can't do it. I can't live like this. I can't, I just can't. Okay. Got that out the way. Anyway, I'm here with a story time today. I want to tell y'all a story about how my ass got arrested literally a week before my graduation from college because I am that girl. Before that, I just want to take care of a couple quick, a uh, couple of quick housekeeping items. First of all, I just want to say, um, excuse this backdrop. Um, this art is eventually going to go up on the wall. I'm still unpacking from moving into the place um as i mentioned a bitch was writing a book <laughs> yeah i said it before i'm gonna say it again um and it's just been really busy so i haven't quite gotten this set up yet but i do think that this for the most part is where i'll be filming and telling you all more stories like this and also i want you guys to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and that you give this video a thumbs up share this video tell a friend that's what I need you to do. Y'all remember when I first, when I used to be real creative about how I uh, asked y'all to subscribe to my channel? I'm gonna I'm keep, I'm gonna keep that energy and I'm gonna bring that back. But anyway, let's get into this story time. So, I graduated from DePaul University, um, the Blue Demons or whatever. Um, I don't really claim them per se. I transferred into that school after I had already failed out of another school, which I also don't claim because like I ain't getting no degree from there either. So I just, I don't have a lot of college pride. College is really a scam. It, um, I got a lot of student loan debt uh, to show for it. And to be honest, I didn't really have a super great time. Like I just never got into that. I never like went to football games or sporting events for any of the colleges I went to. I, I never wore like Perry and shit. You know, I, I don't wear stuff with like my colleges on it. I just am not that girl. Now, when it comes to Kenwood Academy High School on Blackstone in Chicago, that's a different story, but that's neither here nor there. But I said all that to say, even though I didn't have a ton of school spirit, I was really excited because I was finally finna graduate, y'all. It took me, so I just briefly mentioned that I got kicked out of one college in order to even transfer into DePaul to finally get my bachelor's degree. I had been at that school for like three and a half years. I did three years in a semester there, then transferred into DePaul, did half a semester, or, or did one semester, half time, then did like a year and a half full time. So it took me a total of six years to get a bachelor's degree. So even though I wasn't super excited about the school per se, a bitch was happy to be graduating finally. Like it, it had become this milestone that I really did not think that I would hit because I really struggled in undergrad, y'all. I really was one of those kids who was like really smart in high school and didn't really struggle a lot with the academics that came with high school and just assumed that college would be just as easy, I guess. I was not prepared for the workload of, of college because I was never one of those kids who had to work hard in high school. So anyway, I was super excited to graduate. Now, DePaul has this thing called Fest. At the end of every school year, they have like this big concert where an artist will come and perform and it's like, this whole, this big concert and a lot of people go. And it's kind of like one of the few things that like get students together at DePaul just because DePaul is a city school. It's in the middle of Chicago. They have two campuses in Chicago, one in Lincoln Park, one downtown. And it's a commuter school. Like it's a very small fraction of the students live on campus. Also, cause it's a private school, it's expensive as hell. But like most students uh, commute from other parts of the city or are older students or were transfer students like myself. So there aren't a whole bunch of events that like bring the campus together. And this was one of those events. So um, I didn't have a whole bunch of friends at DePaul just because I was a transfer student. I was a little bit older than some of the other students there. And I was at that point I was like literally there to keep my head down and actually get this degree like I was just like I'm here to 
<laughs> come to class, go to work, and go back home. But I did have a couple of friends. I was with a few of these friends on the faithful night of Fest in 2012. Fest went off without a hitch. I think um, Lupe Fiasco was the performer. So, you know, we had a good old hotel time. And it was actually after the performance was over and we were walking back towards where, I think we were going, we were gonna go back to a friend's house probably to have some drinks, you know, just like continue, continue the, the, debauchery or whatever so um it the our group of us i think four of us went to the concert and our group kind of swelled as we linked up with other people most of whom i didn't know um just as the night came to an end and um my one friend let's see let me give her a nickname hmm Let's call her uh, Shrink. Um, Shrink was walking a little bit ahead of me. I was like chit-chatting with some other friends. And all of a sudden, like we heard a commotion of people getting into it. And it's just like, oh, okay, you know, it's college kids leaving a concert. Like, of course, you know, it's probably some drunk debauchery happening. But as we get closer, me and this other friend realized, oh, shit, it's Shrink. Is Shrink getting into it with somebody? So all of a sudden, like I'm speeding up, like oh my god, you know what I mean? Like just what's what's going on? What's you know what's what's T? Like what is? What's the problem? Shrink and some, this girl are getting into it. They're going back and forth. They're having words. I don't even know about what, but it continues on. And this, this other girl that Shrink is into it with is getting more and more aggravated. She's clearly drunk. She's just with a guy. It's just her and a guy. And this guy is trying to like push her along, push her forward. But literally for like a block and a half, two blocks, sis is, is, is popping shit. She talking shit. She, you know what I mean? Going in, woo out the bam. So I am one of those people who I really like try to like take control of a situation and like contain a situation. I actually think I'm pretty good in situations like this because I think I can have a very commanding presence when I need to so I can really come in, tell all parties to chill, figure out, you know, what's the most rational decision, who needs to walk which way, who needs to do whatever. So we walked down a street that was a little bit darker. It was like more of a side street, it wasn't a main street. It was a little bit darker than the main street we were on, but this girl is still just talking so much shit and it's aggravating Shrink more. And Shrink has other friends with her who are also kind of getting gassed up, you know, and people are starting to feel a little bit froggy. So I kind of come up past shrink in that group of folks and and come up to this girl who is who is still being kind of shielded by this guy that she's with and i kind of like push her up against not push like that but i kind of like corner her up against the wall and i'm like sis listen you need to calm down you need to relax it's a whole gang of us over here is just you i understand you upset but like you in a situation where you ain't really at no advantage right now sis that's kind of what i was just telling her i wasn't like threatening her or anything like that and i saw when i was talking to her that she was bleeding but i'm probably like oh this drunk bitch and probably uh you know dude holding her back probably accidentally elbowed her in the mouth with some shit like it, you, she drunk it's, it's that type of night like who knows why this girl is bleeding i don't think anything of it but she does say no, I'm not going to calm down. Look at my fucking face or some shit like that, she said. So I'm like, well, hold on now, sis. Like, I don't don't know why you're bleeding. Don't care. Bring it down. So she's clearly upset and not trying to hear shit that I'm saying. So I'm like, okay, this is a lost cause. Even though she was kind of, you know, talking a lot of shit, this is a lost cause. Let me just go back to my friends. So as I'm as I'm walking now trying to calm my friends down, like, okay, y'all, let's, like, let's just chill. Like, this is a dub. Like, just let's just leave this alone. Like, she ain't really trying to hear shit right now, but it's also a watch. Like, don't worry about it. Also, like, sis is bleeding. Like, she got a lot going on. One of shrink friends say, <laughs> I know I hit shorty ass in the mouth. I say, oh, oh, I didn't 
know anybody had passed no licks. I had seen none of, I, I saw none of this happening. Again, like for most of like the altercation, we were like maybe like 20 feet behind the, the group. They were in a bigger group, like arguing. So it was like girl talking shit, shrink and group of shrinks friends, and me and like one or two other friends. Whatever physical interaction that this group was having with old girl, like I did not see it. I'm legally blind, I can see barely. Barely, but But this but this girl was, you know, told me like, yeah, I popped shorty ass. I'm like, oh, okay. I hey, not not my business. Sis sis was out of pocket. She probably said something, you know, she's probably said something crazy. Like I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, whatever brought that that specific incident about is is what uh it was here's something you should know about shorty who proudly proclaimed that she had popped this girl in the mouth we were similar let's just say you know if if uh someone was reading a description say that a police officer may have put together about a suspect in a crime you know she and i would maybe fit the same type of description like we were both uh, fluffy girls, okay? We were both brown skinned girls. Um, I don't remember specifically like how her hair was or anything like that, but I mean, I had like some curly crochet hair. I mean, I, you know, we, we, we fit the same description, if you will. So, you know, we're kind of walking away and now this, this poor girl and this guy are following us. She's still kind of talking mess. I'm kind of ignoring it at this point because I'm over her. But the police pull up. So apparently Shorty has called 12. Okay. I'm like, damn, shit finna get a little complicated. But shit, like, not my business. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know, I, I'm prepared to not talk to the police like I always do, right? So we actually tried to just keep walking away. Like, yeah, the police here, like, you gonna have to file your reports, do that shit on your own time because, like, we not stopping for that. So I tried to keep walking and the police specifically said, like, nah, everybody stop. So I'm like, okay, they about to, you know. I'm thinking, like, we on a college campus, like, they gonna ask us some questions about what happened. They gonna tell us to break it up. They gonna send us each about our way, whatever. It's fine. But sis was bleeding at the mouth. Okay. So they couldn't just let it go and shorty pointed at me and said she did it she hit me that's how i was looking i was like I, when so then like I'm like, damn, like, she probably thinks because I was the one who, like, cornered her to try to calm her down, like, that I was the one who hit her. But I was like, I, no, no, I did not. So I'm looking at Shorty, who proudly proclaimed that she hit this girl in the face. She says, nothing my other homegirls raising a fit because they know i didn't hit this girl they like oh my god she didn't even do anything like you know what i mean they clink clink they like look we this girl clearly bleeding at the mouth she's saying you did it you right here put these handcuffs on baby girl we finna go <laughs> like that's that's pretty much how it happened now <laughs> fun fact this actually was not my first time being arrested so I already had a record i had been off probation for three years at this point i'm like Oh my God, not again, Lord Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fall out like a church lady at this point because I'm like, I am not trying to go back to jail right now. Like it was just like that initial, like this, you know how when you feel like this is some bullshit, you have no terrible day. It's like that to like the hundredth fucking power. I was like, I am not trying to go back to jail right now like this. Because the thing about going to being arrested is that the moment that the police decide that you have committed some type of crime where they are within their rights to detain you, it's literally out of your hands because it's not their job to determine your innocence or your guilt. That's up to the courts. It's up to them to go to, through the process of arresting you, booking you, documenting what happened and having that evidence ready for the courts. And that's was that's why it's forever fuck 12 and all of that shit because their judgment calls in very like spur of the moment situations are what gets people funneled into this system that disenfranchises black folks and that disproportionately affects black folks. 
So even though I was pissed off and I was like, this is some bullshit, I think because I had been arrested before, I also very quickly snapped out of it and knew that there was literally nothing that I could do. Like they've decided that I've done something wrong and they have to arrest me. Like I have to just let this process happen. Like it just, it, that just is what it is. Like if, if I try to, like, I don't have white woman tears. I don't have, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have none of that. I can't fall out on the floor. I can't, you know, say, oh my God, but wait, let me show you this and this and this. They not about to talk to every single person out there to say who did and didn't do what. The only thing that actually would have stopped me from going to jail is if Shorty, who actually passed the lick, would have said, actually, she didn't do that shit. I did. Y'all think she did that though? No. You raggedy bitch. A bitch was at the motherfucking precinct, okay? Sitting in a cell by myself because there wasn't really no other women in there. They always separate uh, men and women, which is also a problem with the uh, prison system and how it disenfranchises trans folks and puts them in dangerous situations. But I ain't gonna go into all of that right now. Just know that black trans lives matter. Anyway, so I'm uh, in the cell. And the one thing that I remember is <laughs> they take all your jewelry and stuff off when they put you in the cell. They want to make sure that you can't harm yourself. That's a liability for them or harm somebody else. Even though I was by myself, so they still want to make sure I couldn't harm myself. So they're taking all my jewelry and everything off. They're like, can you take your nose ring out? Baby, let me tell y'all something. This, this nose ring right here. This is the most loyal, committed relationship that I have ever been in. So my nose ring is actually, I can't remember if it's like steel or titanium, but it's not super bendy. Like I can't just bend, like I have not taken this out of my nose since I got it in like 2010 or 2011. So I'm like, sir, you know, I'm not, I ain't even gonna hold you. I'm not trying to finesse you or nothing like that, but I cannot get my nose ring out. Like it just won't come out. My mans came into the, you know, he thinking like, oh, he a big, strong man. He Even he came in and tried to take my nose ring out, couldn't get it out. So I was the only bitch in jail with my nose ring in. Anyway, I was there for a couple hours just while they booked me. And I ended up kind of getting out on like, you know, my own reconnaissance. Like nobody had to bail me out for like a simple battery. It was like a, a misdemeanor, a simple battery. Um, they not going to they not going to send you to the county and say no. $20,000 bond for that. So I eventually, you know, get out. They was like, oh, and by the way, if you go back to uh, Champaign, that's what my first college was, you about it. It was like, oh yeah, you got a warrant for your arrest out there too because you got some unpaid uh, speeding tickets. But that's me, you know, but that ain't obvious. You go ahead, go home. That that was it. I spent a couple hours in jail. And I, the first thing I did was actually go link back up with the friends that I was just with. Of course, Homegirl who passed the lick is nowhere to be found. I can just tell y'all right now, and I probably don't need to tell y'all this, but I'm going to just say it anyway. I've literally never seen her in person again. Y'all got to know that. And I, I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get no strikes on my YouTube or nothing like that, but y'all got to know I ain't never seen her again, and y'all got to know that's for the best. When you get arrested, you know, obviously they take your ID, so they have all of your personal information just in terms of like your name your address and stuff like that and because they have your address what happens is that lawyers start to send literature materials to your house in case you know because you they're like oh this person just got arrested they're probably gonna need a lawyer they're probably gonna need a representation we're all we're gonna send all of these flyers and stuff to their house and then they're also sending stuff about like you know different services that they offer at the courts and stuff like that they also have the same correspondence about when your court date is and blah 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 blah, blah. so that's how my mama found out that I got arrested again because I had not said anything to, <laughs> to my mama because I was like my mama found out I got arrested again she is going to have another baby on the spot <laughs> like she's gonna shit a brick she she catch one of the letters and she like what the fuck did you do <laughs> she so I'm like and it, and it literally was one of those situations of like kind of I mean not mistaken identity but kind of like a false accusation against me and like I you know I was, it was explaining it to her and I didn't think that she would believe me because I had actually been arrested before and the first time I got arrested I did that shit okay so I was like damn like she gonna think I'm on some bullshit but she she actually believed me and we went through the whole court process but I actually had to do a lot of damage control because this happened again 
like literally 10 days before I was supposed to graduate. The, the girl who got hit was a student. The girl who hit her was a student. I was a student, obviously. So I was really nervous that the campus was gonna find out about it and like not allow me to graduate, like withhold my degree or something like that. So I immediately started doing damage control. I'm, I reached out to Shrink. I'm like, okay, who was, who was old girl and why was y'all arguing? Like at that point, I'm finally like even trying to figure out like what even happened. It was like some old shit about a nigga from their freshman year. Like just some real old bullshit neither here nor there. But she gave me the girl name and I literally like hit her up on Facebook. Like, look, no, no, no tea, no shade. Like you was out your body, but I didn't hit you. Like this is the person that did hit you. You know what I mean? You can do with that information what you will, but like that was not me. Like I'm sorry, I'm sorry that happened to you that you, you know what I'm saying, got got popped in your mouth, but baby girl, that was not me. So like we literally had to like have like I literally had to organize a meeting with this girl on campus to like ask her to not kind of pursue these charges because I didn't want to get in trouble. It wasn't me. I reached out to the dean of my of my school. I let them know what was going on. They basically was like, it's kind of going to be like, depending on what happens with like the court case. And essentially the case got thrown out. Old girl who got hit did not show up for court because she wasn't going to pursue the case anymore. And the case itself got dismissed. But that was like a second arrest on my record. And even so, I mean, the good thing is that it was only a misdemeanor. It wasn't a conviction, but it was just, I think that time being arrested, like having already been in the, been in that situation where not only did I like get arrested, but like actually like had to stay in the county jail for a few nights. It just was a reminder of how helpless we are, especially as black folks, when we become under detainment of any kind. Like when people of color are detained, like you lose most of your autonomy, most of your agency. Your ability to like just escape from that situation is dependent on somebody else entirely. And that is honestly like the scariest and most uncomfortable feeling I think that I have ever had. Like, I mean, even when I was a shorty and like, you know how like how your mama accused you of doing something wrong and you know you ain't do it, but your mama won't let you explain yourself. Like anytime you try to speak, she like, nah, shut up. Like, you know how frustrating that is when you know that you're in the right, when you know that you are, just just when you don't have the freedom to express yourself, to, to make a case for yourself, none of that. That's literally what it's like being under detainment and that's true whether or not you locked up by the police whether or not you locked up by ice the feds whoever and they put you in this uncomfortable and inhumane ass setting like you gotta piss and shit you know where everybody can see you if that's what you have to do this time since i was only in there for a couple hours it wasn't even that deep but you know when i was in the county like that's how it go and it's just such a demoralizing experience and it's just so easy for black people to end up in that situation because we are always criminalized whether we did some shit or not we are suspicious we are you know not to be trusted quote unquote and people just have a lot of assumptions about who who we are it was just like a reminder of how easy it is to get swept up in that system and then also just like what the repercussions are the first time i was arrested was 13 years ago and then the second time i was arrested was eight years ago the the ramifications from the first time that i was arrested like and i was like actually when I was writing my book, I wrote about the first time I was arrested, but like that shit followed me for years. Like it left me broke. I was broke as hell because I couldn't get a job. Almost couldn't get into graduate school because I had to like tell them that I had been arrested before. Although I'm gonna put you on a little bit of game. I just recommend if you got like a, a case on your record, like in the school ask about it when you apply into like start at the school, like doing your admission stuff, just don't tell them. They're not gonna background check you unless you tell them to background check you essentially. So like they just asked me to like write a letter, like, okay, why was you arrested? Like what happened? And I told them what happened. I didn't even tell them about the second time. I just told them about the first the first time because I knew that that was a conviction on my record that would come up in background checks. Um, and even now, like, I don't even, I don't put it on pretty much anything now because most background checks don't go beyond 10 years, um, unless the actual police are doing the background checks. But yeah, it just, it followed me for a really long time. It made life really 
really hard. My family was all shook up by it. They had to come out of their pocket for money to like bomb me out and stuff like that. So the second time where it was just literally because somebody, you know, just like in the chaos of a moment, confused one person for the other. And like, I could have just easily been back in that shit. Just, it just had me shook. I got to graduate. It all worked itself out. I had already, luckily for me, I had already gotten a job. You know, I was about my back. <laughs> I had already gotten a job. So I wasn't too worried about that. I, I went to DC. Um, I think I flew home for my court date because it was like a couple months later. Um, and it got dismissed and it was fine. Um, and it all worked out in the end. But that's how I got locked up, y'all, right before my graduation. <laughs> If you like having story times, I do them every once in a while on the channel. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to share if you have any questions or if you feel like there's something I missed, feel free to leave it in the comment below. Thanks so much for watching.